was at a friend's house last week, uh, a retired machinist, and he's, what he wanted to do was make sure that a lot of his tools that he's had all his life go to somebody who will use them. Well, I'll certainly use them. And what I do and use, I'll swap or I'll give away. I'll make sure they all get put to good use. Um, he's given us quite a few items, some of which I'll keep, some of which I'll give away. There's one item he's given us. Um, I need to show you it. It's uh, it's such a fantastic piece of kit. I never ever thought I would own anything as good as this. Anyway, I'll put the camera on, let you have a look, and I'm sure you'll agree that this is something that I'll. I don't know who'll get it after me, but I'll have it until <laughs> until the day I go. I will never ever give away or sell this item. This is the item I've been given. It's a full set of imperial slip gauges. The magic thing about these ones are they're all made of tungsten carbide, solid tungsten. They're absolutely beautiful. The finish on there is absolutely amazing. These all want wiping clean and a little bit of light oil putting on them. Absolutely beautiful. The quality is fantastic. Those ones there all go up in one tenth of a thou. I will be doing a little bit of video to show how you use these, what they're used for. One real good use for them is calibrating micrometers. Anyway, thanks once again for this, uh, this wonderful gift. It is something that I shall definitely treasure. Absolutely fantastic. I'm just going to put a small recess on that part in there, which is the little part that the guy didn't put any threads on. The part and tool, you have to do the job quite nicely. You just to make sure that the parts go right away home for the face. Right, that's all it needs. It needs to be shortened slightly as well. A couple of threads to come off it. One more. That'll do for me. A little radius on the edge of it just to take the, the sharp corner off. We need to put a, a hole up with a centre here. The hole's going to be quarter inch. I've got a quarter inch lima, so I will use that. Six mil. In the bang good, six mil drill, so it's first. So we're a nice round, good finish, quarter inch roll. Right, I've got a little collar block set up, a hexy block so I can machine a hex on the end of here. Once again it's a bang good collar block. I'll put a link in the end of the video too because I think that they're good value for money. And being as what bang good I sort of helped to sponsor my workshop a little bit. So I'll just touch this off. I'm going to make this hex the size that I think is going to look right. 
is probably about there. Whatever you do, turn the wait the machine stops, don't go putting your fingers in there when it's running it'll it will bite you. It's just a case of going round. Nice and gently you've taken quite a decent cut here and just machine it flat. And every part of the hex. You know, the nut, call the nut just held against the vase, just a gentle tap and make sure it is nicely down home. Last one. That's actually got a copper end on it. I'm not actually hitting the, the thing with some of it. I'm going to mark it. Put a new tip in there. That tip's actually chipped, it's not cutting straight. So it should be better. Like the fork part and all the way off. Sooner I get my new tool on the rack. The better. Spend more time scrapping around looking for tools than it is. I wouldn't care, you basically only use three tools. I'm going to take the edge off that one. Same with that one. Just makes it look finished. Right, that's the little nut right to screw into there. The needle valve to make now. Go on, screw in. Okay. Now on this needle valve, there was a little fibre washer 
on there, but when you look in the bottom of there, there's a tape I'd seat, and I think I've meant to be gland packing around there. That's what I'm going to put in, like, I like on steam engine gland, a little bit of graphite yarn around there. That'll go down, and that'll seal the, it'll seal the needle valve into there. It's going to be a good fit anyway, because all we're doing is bleeding air from these two holes into there. At least I think that's how it works. <coughs> the next part I'm going to make is actually the needle, the pointy bit to put the threads on. I'm going to make the knurled nut uh, separate and solder it on. This is bronze, it's much better material than the, the brass. I haven't got any brass of a simple diameter to make one of these, so I'm going to be like a two piece needle. So I need that down to dead on quarter, uh, some threads on. So we'll Flower up of it. Because this is quite thin, it's actually getting pushed away. The tool's pushing it away, so it's thicker than it is there. I'm just going to put a temporary center in just to hold it so we get it down to size. A different tool in as well. And a really sharp high speed steel tool here, which is very good for cutting brass. See what was cutting at that end. Just a rough indication of how much thread we need. I'm not sure how good this dye is. I'm going to find out. It's pretty good. Put a nice sharp thread on there. Put one screw into here. Certainly will. It's a little bit piss wobbly slack that. The die won't open it up. They cut a bigger thread and they down on my bars also, not quite. Right, we'll do another one. I've got exactly the same problem with this die hole as I had with the other one. The die is just too good to fit in there and it doesn't allow us to expand the die to slacken the thread off and also that grub screw hasn't got a point on so it can't open it up.
So I have to put in that chuck on, modify this the same as I did the last one. Doesn't need much just to the funny's hair really. So I think that should be taken out of the chop. What I should have done was turn this diameter first when the bar was still nice and rigid. It is cutting but it's pushing it away. I will get there. It would have been nice if I'd done this part first. Right, I have decided to do it again. And I've machined the little point of the needle first when the bar was nice and stiff. I just want that down the quarter and then with some threads on it. Unfortunately, I forgot to start the camera out. as well this machine a lot better. The machine's very happy on the 2000, it's on the 2000. Makes it quiet. That is a much better thread.
It wants a little bit, a little bit fine massage up here just to get that to slip on that last little bit. It's obviously slightly of a coat, that was not much in it. Try to lay forward, you know, it only gives a better result. Here. Right, this is beginning to look a lot more promising now. And we're slowly getting into there. What I'll do, I'll put some ink on the end of that needle just to make sure that it is going into a proper seat. Now, if you look, you can see the end of the, the needle there. I'll put some ink onto it. I could use mark and blue, but I've got some ink handy. Right, so, if we screw this assembly onto there. all the way home and we'll take it off we should have a nice shiny ring with it and we'll have you can see it right on the end there about a third of the way up where it's actually sealed on there I'm put a shallower taper on just to try and get it to move further up the needle Right, that's better. You can see it now. Happy. John's happy now. In last week's video, I showed these a little, a little happy frog, the little tool holders for the quick change tool push. Quite a few people have asked if I would cut them for them. Um, if I get enough interest, I'll price up what it costs to cut a batch of them. If enough people want them, just send us an email and say you're interested, and I'll, I'll sort of price up. Once again, it's just time to see you. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and as always, a massive thanks for all the well wishes that are coming in towards my wife and my dad. Anyway, thanks for watching.